And the Blades will have to reload and restart up ice. Here is Tyler Kirkup with some space down this near side wing. He's going to head in, he shoots. Oh, he rings the outside of the pipe. Mascarawani looked like he had his angles covered, but still the sound of puck on, uh, on iron, Stu, was uh, giving the Coventry Blazer a little bit of a boost. As the Blaze will look to start up, four and a half minutes having gone in the first period. Coventry plays with the uh, closest chance of the night so far, flicking one off the outside of the pipe from Tyler Kirkup, but the Belfast Giants will want to try and go one better with Kohei Sato. His shot's kicked away by Kozen. And he will go back into the offensive zone, carrying it himself, drops it off to the wing, but Sean Norris is unable to pull it in. Aiden Spellacy on the forecheck is going to take that puck away. Spellacy with an opportunity on the backhand. He's taken down as a one-timer from Norris. He had to put it wide. As, well, take a look at this one again. This is really smart play from Norris, actually, because he's, his eyes light up. He's got a big opportunity. But if you see where the sprawling Aiden Spellacy is, he immediately changes his angle, throws that puck in behind the net. As he really could have done some damage to his teammate there. Christo will try and bring that puck across to the trailing Ripley, but it's going to be a chance for Curran on a breakaway. Curran using his speed gets in. Good save by Kozen, and the Blazers will get that out of the crease on the rebound. Again, the, talked about the speed of Sato. There's some speed from Curran. Brady Norris. Oh, Brady Norris could pick that one up. Nazarian looks to drop it off to Preston, keeps it himself in the end. Guides it to the top of the slot. Big chance. Pat save by Kozen. And the Coventry Blades will chop that north. And the Belfast Giants just probing with the trailing man a couple of times there, Stu. And i got to say, Tom Cozen's been in immaculate between the pipes yeah, so absolutely far. Absolutely immaculate. Needed to be as well. The, the Coventry Blades there got caught completely out of shape. They had four players in a line down the right-hand side there, almost in a, in a complete vertical, the, with the left-hand side of the ice wide open. And the, the Giants very nearly able to exploit that. Curti on a pretty smart little stop and go. Giants come out through the near side boards. Lake goes to center ice. Fires shots redirected. Does come off the pads of uh, Taron Cozen. On the Coventry Blaze. Well, ship that puck in. Luciani to chase with Beskar and Wani. McNulty. Puck jumps off a stick. He gets a shot away. Kicked aside. Oh, Quinn Preston high straight up the bench. He's going to get a breakaway. Preston on goal. He scores. Puck comes up off the glove of Cozen, but into the back of the net. Quinn Preston straight off the bench. Just over a minute having gone in the second period. Does finally have the first goal of this hockey game. And it's his eighth goal of the year. And you can see the scrambling back. James Shearer just can't quite get there to make a difference on that shot. And Belfast are on the ball to do. Talberg across that blue line pass. He'll go and get the little drop off. Back to Brady Norris. Norris hard pass to Roth. Roth looks in. Was just maybe trying to get Beskarwani to bite. Saw the uh, penalty killer diving across. Coventry keep it alive in the zone. Christo rolls it back to Talberg at the point. He shoots through a crowd. He scores. Kobe Roth offered his stick up for a tip. Between the two of those gents, they tied this game up. It didn't take long on the fourth power play. Kobe Roth first the bench might have got a touch, and if he has, that's his 12th goal of the regular season. And still a nice fundamental hockey play leading to this one. Yeah, absolutely. I think it is. Just get the man in front of the goalie on the power play and go for the high-low tip here. Christo gets it back to Talberg, who's on the blue line. He just shoots it in, and then, yeah, that low, that high-low tip there from, from Kobe Roth gets it past best score on. He hasn't really got much choice uh, or chance to save it. I suspect they're probably going to have a, a discussion there just to check to make sure that the, all the referees think that Kobe Ross' stick was uh, was below the crossbar when it touched the net, and they are, they're going to ask to review it. Yeah, they're going to go take a quick look. I'm having a good old look at this one, though, Dean Smith and, uh, and, and James Irons. Yeah, absolutely. Like I say, if you've got the technology, use it. And it, it was in and around that area. Um, well, they made the decision, Stu. And the decision is a goal. Much to the joy of the Sky Dome Marina, or the majority of. And the Coventry Blaze have tied this game up on the power play. Preston 
circles away. Oh, with the puck, he was falling. He kind of fell into Kirkup. He jumps up, he's okay, but for a second, that looked like it could have been nasty. It's good to see him doing all right. Oh, as he checks Spellacy. Kirkup throws that puck across. Shot comes in off the top of the bar. Spellacy a little bit slow to get up. He's the only man back. He's going to try and cover a little bit of defense here. McIntyre gets checked into the boards. Norris goes and gets that puck in the corner. Spellacy will now get to the bench, having looked a little shaken up on that play. Meanwhile, here's Kirkup. To the point, one time from Norris. Oh, big tip in front. Dudek just couldn't chop it out of the air. Ericsson will chase this one. But just kind of sitting there for Nathan Ripley to curl down and pick up as we're quickly approaching the halfway mark of this game. Tied up at one. Couple of goals already in this second period. Oh, there's a loose puck out in front. Big chance. There's going to be a penalty on the play. Aiden Spellacy was hauled down to the ice on a mistake by the Giants' back end. He would have had the net. He was yanked down, and the commentary players will go back on the power play. Fifth man advantage of the Knights, too. Talberg, drop off for Roth. Roth along the boards. Does pick out Christo, but puck is poked in behind Danny Christo. Talberg and Kohei Sato, oh, having a battle. That's an awkward collision. Kohei Sato looked like he cross-checked Talberg after turning around to do so, and the Blazers are going a five on three. That was weird from Sato. I don't know what he was doing there. Yeah, there was there was very little need to make that that follow-up to the hit. We see it here. Sato and Talberg battling for position, absolutely fine. But there's no, at that point, there's no need to, to drive the player down into the ice with the with your stick cross like that. So Norris will drop that puck off for Kobe Roth. A little ahead of Roth, but he was able to settle it on the five on three and a little pressure there. Christo at the top, drops it off. Norris thought about the one time, throws it out in front of a towel, but the puck got, I think, tipped by Curti. And Coventry will keep that alive in the offensive zone. Norris, one time, oh my goodness! Brady Norris got all of it. The water bottle goes flying and the Coventry Blades do have the lead on a five on three. And oh, Brady Norris ate all his breakfast, ate all his lunch and put all of it behind this one. Absolutely got, got right behind that puck on the one-timer. Absolute rocket from the back end. Another look here. Just winds up and puts all of his weight through that. And it, any netminder in this league is going to struggle to save that. Cook wins that puck off his skate, Spellacy. Clements was looking to either lurk behind the net or in front of the net, depending on what he needed to do. And he's picked that puck up. Oh, and it blazes wide. The goal light came on. That confused me for a second. Either way, the Belfast Giants are now back to full strength. And I don't think David Clements missed that by much at all. Allen leans on Cooper. Cooper on the backboard. Ends up in a bit of a heap. There's going to be a penalty on that play. And the Giants are going to get a power play. Brown spins around Roth. And he walks into David Clements. Puck is touched up. And it's going to be a holding minor on Carter Allen. As you see, Stu, the, uh, the string of penalties continues. Oh, as McNulty gets speared. The linesman saw it. I think both referees were skating to the bench, but they speared him in the, uh, the place. You don't want to get speared if you're a gentleman. Yeah, we'll, we'll get another look. Ian McNulty walking down in the, in the center of the ice there. He gets a trip, and then that's a clear spear. That, that should be an ejection. Yeah, I agree. Of course, there's chaos everywhere he plays, Davy Phillips, that kind of defenseman. He's been a staple of the national team since um, mid noughties There's all that puck across over Cook on a breakaway. Good save by Beskarwani. Mitch Cook, sneaky, sneaky on the stretch pass. Still looking for his first point of the year, Stu, and he nearly had it there in style. What does he have to do to score? Absolutely. The Giants have got uh, Tedesco, McLeod, and Sato as the forwards, as Mitch Cook's going to bring that across the line. Couldn't really get it on a, a bobbling puck. Just dump it in behind the net, though. Spellacy tries to jam one in short side, but the Giants are going to collect that puck, and they're going to head up ice. They're going to come across the line three on two. Curran drops it off where it came. Back out in front. There's a big chance and a good save by Taron Cozen. He's leaned on that puck against his net, and he will sit on it for the whistle. Excuse me, it was Travis Brown that was heading up ice to support. Really nice uh, bit of speed from the Giants coming up ice, turning that into a, uh, into a three on two. Yeah, really. 
Thompson as Blazer on a change. Dumps that puck in. Mitch Cook first to it again. Trying to spin away from Curran. Shields that puck away from his uh, former teammate. In goes Spellacy for the puck. Trying to keep it away from Pound. Gets it to the point. Kukali has some space. He'll wind up a wrister through a crowd. Oh, it hit Pescarawani. I think in the chest. But it, it looked like he, he thought that was coming down low blocker. Might have taken a tip on the way through. That's uh, my deduction from that bit of analysis. As the puck ends up in the corner. Spellacy's going to go grab it. Shearer takes the hit to kind of roll off and make the play. Little drop pass for Norrish. Norrish steams across the line. Luciani shoots a weak one towards the net that ends up between the legs of Bestrowani. Sits on it. I think uh, Alessio Luciani was looking for a rebound there. I absolutely think you're definitely looking for the rebound. Maybe looking for a tip as well because it's kind of lightly floated in. So at that sort of speed, if you can get a bit of a deflection, and it, it, there is a, a chance to cause a little bit of chaos in front of the net, but uh, Bestrowani sees that all the way and comfortably makes the save. Yeah. Norrish, lovely little zone entry down the left wing side to McNulty. Back to Norrish. Norrish winds up, drives, oh, upstairs, hard. Just a little bit too much elevation over the top of the net glove side. McNulty, meanwhile, takes it over to the point. Shearer, Norrish might go again here. On the wrist to down low, this time looking maybe for a tip or a second puck. Either way, that puck ends up being chipped out into the fans and we'll have a stoppage. Brady Norrish is just something else. He's just different gravy, isn't he? Yeah. McNulty. Into the corner. Can't keep that one alive, and the Blaze have to mop it back in the neutral zone. A little bit of pressure comes in on Thompson. Pipped is cool. And now he'll look to bring this puck up ice. Carries it in Blake Thompson. Drops off looking for McNulty. It was just ahead of Ian McNulty, but he is going to be able to grab it off the boards. It'll come in for it for Luciani. Luciani! Fancy hands, it's sat on the pipe. The outstretched skate from Beskarawani. Just kept that one out of the back of the net. There's going to be another penalty on the play. It's going to be a slashing call. And the commentary player is going to get some five on three here, Stu. Yeah, not a great amount of five on three, though, because there's only nine seconds left there. But it was, there were two or three slashes there from Davy Phillips on the hands of Alessio Luciani. And again, it's really another team penalty that you kind of have to take there because you don't want Luciani stick handling with no one between him and Tyler Bescorowani when you're at a goal down and eight and a half minutes left to play. Yeah. Belfast playing six on five. Cooper with a one-timer. Blocked on the way through again by this time Kim Talberg. Cooper across the blue line. Brown dumps it in. McIntyre back to the point. Brown's going to look upstairs. It took a deflection, I think, off the shoulder of Sato. Blaze will touch it up. Two and a half minutes remaining in the hockey game. And the Belfast Giants going on the PP. Curti. Tedesco's going to step in, shoots upstairs, blocked on the way through. Kirkup trying to dig it out of his feet. Norrish will help out. Bit the puck is at the point with Curti. Cross to Preston. Shoots on the toe drag. Comes off the chest of the place defense with Shearer. That's now out in front. There's a dig at it. Down goes Spellacy. There's a penalty on the play. Spellacy had his feet taken out from under him. And it'll be four on four again, Stu. Yeah, uh, another bit of four on four as the, uh, the penalties keep racking up this evening. Face off one by JD Dudek. Kukali's going to toss that one in. Dudek with a stick lift on Curti. And the Giants will mob him and go and get that puck. We're into the last minute with the Blaze leading by one. Beskarawani to going to the bench again. Ericsson hanging down the slot. Puck at the point now. Back to Ericsson who curls. There's a goal line chance out in front. Pressing on a quick snappy one timer. Stopped by Kozen. Puck at the top of the circle. Curti gives it back. JD Dudek trying to stick that one out of the A. Dives looking to tip it. It's out in front. It's off the pipe. It's under Cozen. They've hacked it home and the Giants have tied it up with 30 seconds left. A real goal mouth scramble. And that is going to be heartbreaking for the Blaze. And it might see us go into OT too. <laughs> Well and truly wedged in the corner. Could probably grab a water bottle and have a little sip the way there. That's not moving as Tedesco and Norrish end up in a bit of a heap as well. Cook realises he's got a little bit of space to kind of get out of danger and chips that puck back in. And the Blaze will freshen up a little bit with Alessio Luciani on that loose puck along the boards on the stretch pass. Runs that into the boards with Sato. He's still got it. Alessio Luciani. Oh, he gets bumped. Sato able to play strong and bring that puck out. 
Luciani leads on him again. He's going to get a breakaway. Luciani to win it. Can he do it? Yes, he can. Luciani gives the Blaze the win in overtime. He was hooked on the play. He'd have had a penalty shot. He didn't need it. And he scores a giant goal for Coventry against the Belfast Giants too. Uh, Luciani coming in on this breakaway. Gets the hook but still manages to go. Takes it onto his backhand. Gets Tyler Bescorawani to buy over to that right-hand side as we're looking at it. Then switches it back to the forehand. Slots it into the back of the net. And the Blaze will be overjoyed that they have managed to get two points again here this evening. Four wins in a row now for the Coventry Blaze. Here with Blaze head coach Danny Stewart after the uh, OT win against the Belfast Giants to make it four wins in a row. Uh, Danny, that was a massive win. I don't think we can understate it. And it was the power play that came up big. It, well, it did. It, it certainly did in terms of goals, but percentage-wise, maybe not. There was a lot of disrupted power plays too, you know, penalties in between and stuff like that. It was it was a stressful night, I think, for the players, you know, motion-wise, you know, the refs, things like that. And um, But listen, I, I what I said to the group was, you know, four or five weeks ago, we probably would have went and found a way to lose that hockey game, right? And I thought we did a great job in the third period, even when they had that six on five for about 30 seconds there, guys blocking shots. We kept them to the outside and um, unfortunately, one goes off a skate and kind of hits the side of the net, but takes a weird angle back in behind Cozy, and we thought he had it. Whatever, it happens. But uh, great goal by Lucci there, you know, to get us the two points. And, you know, I'm happy for the guys. You know, we've we've been playing with a lot more confidence here lately and obviously turning those, those good performances into wins, and that's key, right? You know, sometimes you're not going to be at your best, but, you know, the performances have been good, and, uh, you know, it's resulting in two points. They're, they're a very deep team, and we talked about this kind of off-air before the game, not having Hazel, Dine and Hopkins, who take you know, seven, eight minutes a night each. You take that out of the equation, it makes it even more tough. So you must be really proud how the guys were resilient and rallied throughout. Well, especially the load on, on, on specific guys with the, all the special teams, right? You know, we're probably going to have some guys that are 24, 25 minutes, and, um, you know, having those extra bodies sure helps. And, yeah, they are a deep team. They're a heck of a team over there. We know that. Uh, you know, we didn't get caught up in you know, where they are in the standings. You know, we know they're a top team in this league and, you know, they'll be there in, in the end. So um, we just went about our business. I think we did a good job keeping our focus. Like I said, there was a lot of stress in tonight's game, a lot of calls, non-calls, stuff like that. And, you know, I'm sure it was stressful for the refs, but um, I, th I thought they called what they needed to call. And, um, you know, when we, when we did find ourselves on the wrong end of it, we just kept our focus and got the job done. You don't often have home stands, extended home stands in the Elite League. It's not a league that that generally happens. It's game three of a, what I think is a four-game home stand tomorrow. That's come at a pretty good time when we're on a roll, hasn't it? We can sleep in our own beds tonight. We don't have to travel. We can just come to the rink and go about our business. Yeah, I mean, it's the start of a, a big stretch for us, right? I think it's 12 games in 21 or 22 days. So you can start it off at home a few times. You know, that's good. But, uh, you know, we're just we're just looking at it one game at a time here. You know, it's uh, we got through tonight. It doesn't look like we got any injuries. So... Um, um, just got to make sure we're managing bodies and managing minutes as and when we can. And tonight was a tough, tough game to do it with all the penalties and, and special teams. So um, we'll get rested up and, and look ahead to Nottingham tomorrow.